said I'd be doing at least one video a week, but I never said I could do more. And I was kind of struck with the need to make something yesterday after cleaning up my little work area and fixing up a few things. So I decided to start working on a project that's been sitting on my to-do list for a couple months. And that is a gondola. Uh, a little shelf-sitting gondola. And if you're wondering why I'm not drawing a boat on the screen, I'm about to take you down a rabbit hole. Let's talk about memes. So years and years and years ago, on 2channel, or 2chan, a uh, Japanese image board, someone made an ASCII art bear that they called Kuma. That bear was later redrawn, and then later yet again uh, dubbed as Pedal Bear on 4chan, the English image board of uh, relative infamy. That bear was then <laughs> redrawn on, I believe, a Finnish, uh, as in Finland, um, Finland, Finnish image board as Spurdo Sparde, who is a poorly drawn bear who speaks in broken uh, Finno-English. I don't know what you would call that. And then, once more, on yet another image board, uh, someone from Italy posted Gondola. Gondola is a, yet again, poorly drawn version of Spurdo Sparde, but he's just two legs and a head. He was given this description later on. Gondola was not a mistake. Gondolas are relaxed, harmless creatures that observe their environment. They rarely interfere anything, but just keep observing. They rarely talk, just look around and smile. This makes them very different from other creatures such as Spurdo, that feel, Pepe, Yoba, etc. Gondola is the silent walker. Having no hands, he embodies the Taoist principle of Wu Wei, non-action. While his smiling facial expression shows his utter and complete acceptance of the world as it is. You gotta see it to understand it. Uh, <laughs> of of the memes. Oh God, I hate. I hate even talking about memes, but I like Gondola. Gondola is very, very fun. But what you're seeing me do here, and this is part of my general creative process, is I'm sketching it out, getting a feel for the general proportions of the figure, about how large I want it to be. I'm using a ruler right now just to sort of roughly estimate how big it should be. Um, settled in around about four inches maybe a little bit more by the time it's done but yeah I like doing this whenever I start a project just because it allows me to sort of wrap my mind around the full piece or rather what it is I'm making and how all the parts relate to each other so with that I just kind of jumped right into it and um, this was a trial and error process more than anything else uh, just sort of playing with the material, seeing what works. If you're wondering why I specifically use Super Sculpey, you can clearly see it's because I have a large brick of it, and I've been very, very slowly whittling through it, uh, one little project at a time, because I'm working in such small quantities that uh, you don't go through a pound of Super Sculpey making one little four-inch Goblin Slayer or, you know, a bunch of little one-inch minis. Fortunately, though, I do like working in Sculpey. It's not merely a matter of necessity. Uh, Sculpey is it's nice for a couple reasons. It's something that works with my sort of creative process of building something, then refining it down, then building on top of it. Uh, and maybe I'll show a little bit more of that in later videos. Right here now, though, I am deciding against building this whole thing out of raw Sculpey, so we're setting back to zero and building a little tinfoil form just so I can get the size a little bit better and not have to wait, waste quite as much material uh, building this thing solid, which does also increase the cook time and increase the possibility of cracks or defects appearing in the piece, which if it gets bad enough that might mean starting from scratch. So that's a precautionary thing. Um, since I kind of liked what I was working with, I went to the next step, which is making a wireframe for the legs. And uh, 
this is just normal, I believe it's 10 gauge wire. You can just get it at Home Depot and they get it in a big spool. If you're working with small projects like I am, or simpler things, uh, you won't go through a lot of this stuff very quickly. Um, but even in this case, it's just some scrap I had laying around. So I took that and started to shape it into kind of a stick figure version of the legs which would then, or will later be, covered in Sculpey and used to give it a little bit more rigidity because the more you work with Sculpey, sort of the softer it gets. Um, and I would not be able to cook this without something in those lakes to keep them sturdy and stable uh, because they just droop and fold in on themselves uh, before they could properly cook. So here I've set up a little frame for the legs and sculpted in a little channel on the bottom so it fits together and now I'm just kind of making it all more or less one piece and this is just sort of working tin foil on top of tin foil on top of tin foil to bulk it out just a little bit more and also secure those legs to it so they're not wobbling and falling off because having a, a good strong base to build around does make the whole process easier it's basic sculpture stuff, but it's all the, also a thing that you sort of learn as you work with the materials and sort of figure out their quirks and differences. Fortunately, I have a habit of working a little bit close to myself, so some of this gets removed from the camera. But what I'm doing here is just working a little bit of material at a time, wrapping it around the form, and then making sure it's all sort of attached. Um, you can more or less press Sculpey right onto itself, but it doesn't always bond super well, so it does help to take time just to sort of work with it. What you're seeing me do here is kind of scoring the the edges where they meet and then rubbing them together because that mixes and bonds the two separate pieces a little bit better. And I'm going to be doing a lot of that in a moment. And it is somewhat important that I do get this looking close enough to what I want it to look like. Because um, what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to be finishing this off and then cooking it. And it's not going to be done at that point. Just the way I like to do it uh, involves cooking it, then sanding it and refining it, then maybe adding a little bit more material, cooking it again, and repeating until it looks the way I want it to look. Some other people may be able to take Sculpey and start to finish, have it look right all in one go, but uh, I, I prefer to sort of take my time and work with the Sculpey when it's in the different states. Uh, obviously I can't get it perfectly smooth and ideal right now, so I just kind of accept that it's going to look a little off, but once I take my time to sand it and refine it once it's cooked, it'll look a lot better and I can really fine tune it. Uh, this is more of what you would call the additive uh, kind of sculpting, um, adding material to it, whereas uh, I do some of my best work in the subtractive state where I'm removing material and smoothing it out and refining it. This isn't to say though that the additive state isn't important, it clearly is, but I can kind of get the, the level of detail and the carving and all the little stuff done a lot better as long as I have enough material to work with from the additive state. Now, what you're going to see me do here in just a moment is switch tools. I'm just using some basic sculpting tools, but I kind of discovered something interesting um, from working with Sculpey so much over the past few months, and that's you can sort of roll it smooth. And I mean, that seems kind of obvious, but what I'm using here is just like a basic little dowel rod that I've smoothed off the end and sanded a little. But you can see just by sort of rolling the tool back and forth over the edges, it causes it to smooth out and bond into one cohesive piece. And that's a little nicer to do when you have a smaller, more delicate area and you can't afford to be scoring the entire thing up because that might, that might destroy it and you might have to start over. So now it's just a matter of uh, repeating the process over and over. Um, I think I'm just going to leave you with some music for a little bit so you don't have to hear me keep talking for another 10 minutes. But, yeah, I'll come back in uh, a little while to talk about some other things. Thank you. 
So as you can clearly see, I'm adding a little bit more material to the top and bulking him up a little bit just so he's a little bit more proportional with uh, how I want him to look. And uh, there's no measurement or science here. This is just what feels right, what looks right. And um, even though I did talk about the subtractive steps and how I do a lot more better work there, it does help to have these things looking right. It's um, it's a little easier to work down a large piece down to the size I want rather than trying to make a smaller piece bigger, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, so making this look right is uh, during the additive state also involves reducing the amount of work I have to do later. It's kind of the you know, measure twice, cut once kind of uh, mentality. From there, it's going to be a little bit of touching up and detailing and then lots of sanding. Um, of course, my cat does like to visit me on my work desk. Um, it's just a good thing I'm not working with anything toxic or not pet safe, so this isn't a big issue at the moment, but uh, it can be a, a little panic inducing when an animal jumps up on your desk while you're working with something delicate. Uh, for cooking these things, I just use a basic convection oven, or convection microwave, I guess it would be. Um, cook it for about 10 minutes at 250 degrees and then let it cool down. Uh, if you work with it while it's still warm, uh, you can have a little bit of problem uh, just because it's still soft. And you can end up messing up the piece. Um, until it completely cools down and loses all of that heat, it can still be malleable to the point of uh, just breaking apart on you, so do take the time to let it cool down completely. Although there are some cool things you can do by uh, warming it up or recooking it just to give it a little bit more flexibility, say for instance if a piece isn't completely adjusted to the shape you want, or if it's slightly out of position, as I learned, you can heat it up and flex a piece just enough to to readjust it. Um, I don't know if that's recommended, but it works for the tiny things I work with. Uh, at this point, it's time for sanding. This is uh, this is going to be time consuming, but we're going to wrap up the video soon. Mostly, what I'm doing here is kind of going over it and finding all the high spots um, and dropping it. Super Sculpey has a weird sort of quality where like the, the outer texture tends to blend together and it tricks the eye in a way where you don't see all the details quite right. It has like a slight translucence to it and I think it's on purpose. Uh, but by sanding it and going over I can sort of see which spots aren't level, which ones kind of stick up a little bit more than they should and it you know gives me an indication of what areas I need to work down more. And that's going to be maybe most of what the next video is, is just me sanding and shaping and refining. But that is the subtractive process of sculpting. Um, in my case, lots and lots of sanding, but it's also the reason why I left the face off, which is really kind of the only other detail on this guy. I, mean, I could put in little fine wrinkles around his knees and feet and stuff like that, but that doesn't really suit the gondola. They're, they're meant to be a, a simpler design. But if I had to work around the face, it would make this process much, much harder. Uh, and I would probably end up scraping it away and having to remake it anyways, just to get the shape and proportions right. Uh, and one thing I will mention here, which you'll see me do in just a second, is use a fresh sanding sponge. Um, I know a lot of us tend to get uh, comfortable with using one sanding sponge or one piece of sandpaper not realizing that uh, it does wear down and grit and become a great deal less effective. Uh, the sanding sponges I use are just from the dollar store. It's a dollar, you can afford to use it until it's worn down nice and smooth, but when you need to get a lot of work done or when you need to remove a lot of material, it's far better if you're just using a fresh one. Um, the time you'll save in work uh, really makes a difference. It's, it's a matter of do you want to 
be frugal with a sanding sponge, something that's literally meant to be used up, or do you want to actually get something done? In this case, it's better to use a fresh sanding sponge and get something done. But, there's not much else to say here. Um, I ended up with a little over an hour of footage after getting the urge to work on this guy last night. So I just wanted to get this put together and practice my video editing skills a little bit more. Um, I figure a lot of people were sick of seeing the Goblin Slayer. It's the only thing I've been posting about on Instagram and such for a little over a month. Um, so yeah, figured I'd star in the gondola, get something else going, uh, maybe have a little simple project to work on just to sort of cleanse my palette. But here I'm just penciling on a face just so you can kind of get a look at what the finished product's going to kind of be. But I'm happy with the way it's looking so far. Uh, he came together a lot easier than I thought he would. But there's still a little bit more work to go before he's ready to mold and cast and paint and do all that. But thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And there will likely be more sooner rather than later. Hope you have a great day.